particular crime, or rather what you're going to try to do is to identify who, you, who you're going to arrest in advance of a particular crime, or after a particular crime. And remember that, that, that arresting doesn't necessarily mean charging. You can arrest somebody and keep them for a bit um, just because there's, there's sufficient evidence to arrest them. So you have to decide what is sufficient evidence and what, you're, what they're being arrested for. Okay, but you said to arrest someone doesn't necessarily mean charging them with a crime. You have, you have to charge somebody with something in order to arrest them. So, so the idea is that they could be arrested for some crime, but it's not necessarily the crime that they're really focused on. Yeah, yeah, but you're not necessarily charging them. So charging is, is, is then retaining them in custody, whereas arresting them is you read them their rights and you can keep them for a bit, speak to them, and then you can release them. So you can arrest somebody over here without charging them with this? Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, they have, they have a, the right to remain silent. Right, and... <laughs> you can't keep them for a long time. So, <laughs> you can arrest somebody. And it's, an it's a fictitious exercise, so you can arrest who you like. <laughs> <laughs> the, the background to the, to the exercise is that there is intelligence to suggest that drugs are being smuggled into the, in, into the UK on the south coast and transported to a city in the, in the north and then sold. So there is a, a, a drug smuggling exercise that you're or a drug drug smuggling ring that you're supposed to crack and break. The sort of material you have, and I've I've put together a, a, a range of things. You've got maps, photos, newspaper articles, statements from people who've been arrested, interview transcripts, <laughs> criminal records logs of boats going in and out of a particular harbour, statements of accounts, lots of phone records, and uh, a bunch of suspects. I'll talk about the suspects in a minute, but what, what you need to do is to say which suspect or suspects you're going to arrest, and what five pieces of evidence from the set you have in front of you, what five pieces of evidence lead you to support the arrest of that suspect. Um, why not? <laughs> um, it just seemed like a reasonable number. We, we, we wanted to put some constraint on the on the exercise, so you have to justify your your arrest with five pieces of evidence. So if, even if you only have one, we want you to have five. So you've got to sort through the evidence and, and say how useful that is and what does that tell you about the crime that you're trying to, the, the reasons why you're going to make that arrest. So, Must it be only one suspect or maybe two? Or? As many suspects as you like. So you, 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 can, you, can, you can, because you need to charge them, you can arrest everybody. But you have to give the evidence as to why you're going to arrest them. And you have to say when you're going to arrest them. And you have to say where you're going to arrest them. So, so I want you to say, where, where are they going to be, who are you going to arrest, or where are they going to be arrested, when are you going to arrest them, and what are the five bits of evidence that you need. So we, the, the suspects are, so this is where it starts becoming a little bit like Cluedo. Um, David Pico, so you have a, a photograph of, of the suspect and an address. And as a, as a hint, the, this is the real address. Some of these people are criminals, so they may not tell the truth in other places. That's just a hint. Some of these people are criminals. That's their real name. That's another hint as well. Okay. So David Pico is a, a minor criminal known to the police um, with, with a record of convictions, and you have some of his uh, police record. Uh, Jake Adjachinsky. Is also a minor criminal, friends with David Pico, known to the police. The, the surnames I've got from this, I, I, I should also say to you, um, 
come from a book called the Marseille Mafia, which, <laughs> which was about drug smuggling in Marseille, um, but led to the film The French Connection. If you haven't seen The French Connection, watch it. If you haven't seen it recently, watch it again. It's a great film. Um, the, the case itself is, is based on a, a real case, except I can't tell you what the real case is. So it's a modification of a real case, but with bits that I've added. And I can't tell you the bits I've added. So I can't tell you. <laughs> so I've changed the names, and, and I've changed, I've changed one, of the, one of the locations. I've already said too much. Denise Adjachinsky is uh, Jake's sister, and David Pico's ex-girlfriend. Yep. So. Yes, so you have you've got all of this stuff, but I haven't, what I'm telling you now about the, about the characters is just background briefing, and that's not written down here. No. Um, if you, yes, if you want to. So, shall I go back again? So, Pico, uh, minor criminal, known to the police. Adjachinsky. Minor criminal, known to the police. Jake. <laughs> Denise is David Pico's girlfriend, ex-girlfriend. So what I'm what I'm saying now isn't written there. So if you want to write it, uh, no. All you, all you've got is. Yes, because because some of the some of it you'll find in the sheets anyway. Pico, and the sister of Jake. They would the they'd have the same address. Kenny Schiappe is a taxi driver. Um, taxi drivers are important in this case. In Leeds. Yes. Well, you'll find out. <laughs> Pascadini is uh, lives in France. Travels regularly to the UK. <coughs> he travels regularly to the UK. Often. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so uh, Vanessa Minos is the assistant manager of Exmouth Marina. Exmouth Marina is also important. So she's the assistant manager. Muriel, Muriel Grosby is, is quite interesting. She owns a, uh, a haulage company. So she, she owns a, a company in Leeds that, that has lots of lorries and she also owns a taxi firm. The police have long suspected her of being involved in a wide range of criminal activities because she seems a lot richer than she should be. Because she's a lot richer than she should be, she, she can also afford very expensive lawyers, so she's never been prosecuted for anything. Never been successfully. Never been successfully prosecuted for, for anything. Martina Sarti is the, the girlfriend of the manager of Exmouth Marina. 
Queen. Girlfriend of the manager of Exmouth Marina. Jennifer Garlicker is the sister-in-law of Muriel Grosby, the widowed sister-in-law of Muriel Grosby. Her husband was um, assassinated last year in some gangland-related vendetta. Right. So I'm not going to get this information again. There is no tree, no map describing these facts about these characters and their relations. No. So could you please go back one second and tell us again about Jennifer Garlica, please? Garlica, yeah. So she is, she is the sister-in-law yeah. of Muriel, Muriel Grosby. Where are we? Her husband... Jennifer's husband was assassinated last year, probably in a gangland vendetta. So her husband was probably related to gangs, although we don't quite know that. And you've been mentioned two times, twice, Exmouth Marina. It's a company, right? No, it's a place. There's the marina. It's somewhere where boats go. Um, you've got Van Hire Records. You've got the logs of the marina. There we are. So you've got Exmouth Harbour logs. But boats going into Exmouth Harbour then go into the marina. So that's everything you have. Each team will have one collection of paper material for you to work from. The paper material, as with any intelligence analysis, represents the best intelligence that we have at the moment. That means it's not complete. There are gaps and you have part of the, the exercise is to work out how you're going to fill those gaps in.